Okay, record. Is recording again. Okay, it's recording, it's recording. All right, everybody in to the class? Did that get you in there? That's why I always connect hardwire in this room. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start explaining things. If we need to come back to signing in, we can do that. But this uh, this course is um, a course in physics for engineers and physical scientists like chemists and things like that, physicists. And it is a course that is um, pretty heavy mathematically. It's got some, a, a lot of trig in it. It's got a fair amount of calculus in it. We're not doing the trig and the calculus the way you've done trig and calculus in trig and calculus courses. Now that you've done those courses or that if you're in those courses, you're gonna be doing theory and, and proofs and stuff like this. We are just using them as tools, like a screwdriver or a hammer test. So, uh, so I'm not interested in, in your you know, depth of understanding of calculus. I'm, under, I'm interested in you understanding how it is used practically. And so I will be teaching some of that and we will be using it here and there. It's not used heavily, but it is used in this class, um, like I said. So it's just a, a different kind of use. So anyway. There are 10, uh, 12, no, 13, 13 total assignments for this class. So we have 16 weeks in the class and 13 assignments, which means that we have a couple of weeks of cushion essentially. And that's really good because a couple of these chapters will probably take us a little longer than a week. But, um, but we will also have labs associated with several of these chapters, probably a total of about 10 labs. The labs I have, I am, uh, switching over for the past year or two, I've been switching over to having students take home their lab assignments and do them from home at their, on their own time. If you'd like to do them here in class, you're more than welcome to, but, um, but I'm going to still give you a lab kit and it'll be a very independent kind of ex experience for you. The reason for that is because I think students have too much um, guided lab time. In their, in their college experience. Too much of this, this is exactly what you must do. This is exactly how you need to write it up. This is exactly what I'm expecting. Uh, I think students should have a little more freedom, a little more ability to explore things and a little more independent thoughts, a little more independent action, doing things on their own and figuring out things on their own. You're more than welcome to contact me at any time if you need help with homework or, or labs or anything else, but I want you to try to try to have more independent experiences. I think it's very valuable. And it was for me, my, my laboratory experiment experience, my freshman year in physics was uh, pretty much completely independent except for other students that, that I worked with. Uh, we didn't have faculty members or TAs or anything helping us out. We just kind of went and did them. So that's, that's where that is at. Uh, we're going to move uh, through some things here in, in uh, WebAssign. We'll start off with this front page here that has all the assignments. You can see that there are due dates over here. These are not set in stone. In fact, I just kind of threw that schedule together really quick. Um, the exams do have passwords associated with them. There's an exam for chapters one through six, and then there's a final exam, so a midterm and a final, essentially. Um, the homework problems, the 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 exam problems are from the homework. You will have seen them before when you take the exams. So not super high stress there, hopefully. If we go down even further, there's this button here called resources. If you click on that, um, it's not in there. Where did it go? 
supposed to be in there. Let's see here. Let's try now. <laughs> resources. Still not showing the resources. This is a completely this. So this is um, some stuff that's built into this. And I don't know why they have that in there because I didn't ask for it to be in there. But apparently they've put it in. Oh, I guess they are all there. Let's see if that fixes it now. Resources. Apparently I can't go to the student view very easily that way. Let's try it again. Open the student view, go down to my resources. No, it's not there at all. Where did it go? Good night. Oh, because it's unclicked again. Save. All right, let's see if it works now. All right, let's close this and try it again. Sorry, it's hard to tell. In web assigned, sometimes it's a little bit hard to tell what's how things are going to show up and how they're not going to show up. So go to resources down here at the bottom. And now the syllabus is showing up there. Thank you very much. You should be able to click on that and open up the syllabus. So the syllabus is available to you there. This is our fall term 2021. We're meeting from 11 to 11.50, which means we only have 20 minutes left. And uh, my office hours are going to be by appointment. I did that because most students just drop in to see if I'm around anyway. They don't come during like schedule office hours, but I am available just after this class and just before this class, as well as other times during the day. And you can call and make an appointment or you can drop by and do whatever. It doesn't matter to me. What I found, what most students do besides actually coming to my office is just email me. And that's perfectly fine. You can email me uh, directly to my email or you can email me within my open math. I mean, sorry, within WebAssign, which is a different system. So uh, you can go to communications up here, communication section. And they have a place for class forums, which I have not created any, uh, and private messages, which I don't have any threads. And you can you should be able to send a message directly from there. I'm not sure exactly how it's done in this new system, but um, the other way that you can do this is you can go to an assignment while you're while you're inside of an assignment. You can open up one of these assignments, and you can actually um, communicate with me directly from here. You go up to this little button up here that says ask your teacher and you can click right there and type in a little thing. The great thing about doing this is that it will actually send me a little note that includes the problem and shows me what you've done so far, shows me the answers you've entered so far. And I can get an idea of where you've gone and maybe the mistakes that you've made and give you some help that way. Very, if you're asking a question about the homework, definitely use the ask your teacher button. Um, very useful tool right there from the from the class from the uh, inside the web assignment system. I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit. Seems a little too close on. Uh, so you have that option there to communicate with me as well, as well as this email and you can call. If you call me, um, if I'm in my office, I'll answer, but uh, I'm often out and about doing things either in around this room or around the building or other places. Uh, if you call me and leave a message, it will send me an email with that message and I will answer that. Uh, but email is probably the best way to contact me. Here are those, that information for web assign again, but it seems like we've all logged in. So you'll be good um, for those of us joining us later, for those joining us later. What you'll want to do apparently is you'll want to go to web assign. You can click on this link and go to web assign. And when you get to WebAssign, you'll want to create an account if you've not got an account. If you have an account with WebAssign, you can sign in and enter the course key. But other words, otherwise, you would want you want to uh, press the login button here. And when it takes you to the login page, you'll want to press 
that create an account button, which it just takes me directly to my account that way because I've already logged in. But that's what you want to do is press the login button and then create an account and then enter the class key in. And the class key is this entire thing in the, um, in the syllabus, wherever the syllabus went. I don't know where the syllabus went. Here it is. So this entire thing is the class key. It's northplat.mpct, all lowercase, and then space 7361, space 4847. And that should take you to the course. You don't have to pay for it right away. You got a two week period where you can uh, decide whether or not to pay for it. It's a good idea to just kind of let that time run out and pay for it later, unless you need to pay for it now for some reason or another. Uh, one of the one of the reasons it's a good uh, thing to do that is because I'm uh, kind of toying with the idea of paying for the students uh, from my college account. I'm, I have to look into that and see if that's doable, but um, we will we will look into that possibility of paying for that. Um, let's see what else do we have going in this first week. So this class is a class in one and two dimensional motion. We'll be, it's essentially Newtonian physics. Uh, we'll be doing linear motion, we'll be doing rotational motion. And if we get done with that and we don't have anything else to do with our time, we can pretty much choose what we want to do. We can uh, explore some other topics that are related to those things, explore any particular topics you're interested in, or we can just give you some free time to work on your other classes and get done with those classes. So we have a bit of uh, a bit of freedom if we get things done early, because we're such a small class. We can we can kind of play around with that. Uh, four students now, maybe five students. Let's see how that goes. Here they have the course objectives. These are set by these are kind of statewide things for all the colleges in the state. So, but uh, in the in the course we will have uh, quizzes from time to time. Generally, I give quizzes when students decide to not come to class. So I give them as incentive to come to class so they can earn those points. Um, the quiz quizzes are not intended to be a, a test on what your knowledge is from reading or anything else. The quizzes are intended to in instigate thought processes as we go into a new subject. So for example, uh, I gave a quiz today in my other physics class and the quiz was in 10 words or less, uh, define physics. What is physics? I won't give that quiz again since two of the students in this class were actually in that class and then switched to this class. That wouldn't necessarily be fair because they'd have an, an unfair advantage. But advantage doesn't really mean much because I'm going to grade quizzes based on the thought process you're putting into it, not necessarily the right or wrong answer. So an answer that um, has the right thought process where you're trying to evaluate things and put things together in a good way, we'll, we'll receive full credit. If you just put in physics as a science and there's no real thought process, I might, I might uh, subtract some points. But uh, just, doing the, just doing the quiz, you'll get most of the points, whether or not it's considered a right answer. I will give you most of those points just for doing it, just for doing it. Uh, homework. We'll be doing our homework not through my open math, but through WebAssign. I uh, apparently did not change that. Uh, the due dates are all in there. They'll be they'll be managed on WebAssign, but they're not going to be set in stone, as I mentioned. We will have a lot of ability to to kind of be fluid with those, so that we make sure that we're all learning things. This is a course that has a high failure rate in college, and so we try to make it uh, a, a non problem for fail for students failing here at the at this level since we have so few students and uh, we want to make sure that you all succeed so we're going to try to do everything we can to help you succeed learning this stuff and and uh, getting on with your educational career we will be we will be dropping uh, low scores so you have two homework scores that are dropped lowest homework scores three lowest quiz scores that will be dropped Sometimes I like to assign papers in this class. Nothing, not, no big deal with these papers. Uh, usually just maybe a paragraph on something that is interesting or um, uh, I feel like we need to understand better or discuss better. Um, 
I'm not real. I'm not a real stickler on how you write your papers or how you cite your papers. I just want to see what you're thinking. I do want you to write your own papers, but besides that, I'm pretty open. Uh, exams. We will also take those in WebAssign, not my open math. The web. The the exams are open book, and the book that we'll be using is an online book that is free. If you go back to your WebAssign in. Um, your web assigned page here with the class, the front, the front page of the course, there is a link to the textbook right down here on the right. So if you click on that, it'll take you to the online version of the textbook. This is actually the old version. You should convert to the new version. Um, but um, there's just a few corrections in the newer version. You can also come over here and click this button and get this book. You can download it as a PDF or you can download it as a zip file. And then you can view it directly from your computer without having to be connected to the internet. The other thing that you can do is you can actually buy a version of this book if you want to. Um, I think to do that, you would need to, with this one, I'm trying to remember, where the link to that is. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where that is here. Uh, that's just the download. So the um, they may not actually have this one available um, in the exact form that this is one is in. This was in this one is in a form where they split it up in a particular way. The the version that you buy that you can get from. Uh, OpenStax, if you actually go to OpenStax and look this up, let's go do that really quick. You go to OpenStax.org, which is their new website, and you go down here to look at their different books. There's this out. They have math books and physics books and science books. The one that we're looking at is University Physics, and they've, they've actually split this book into three separate volumes and the chapters are not numbered the same. They still have the same chapters. So if you, if you buy volume one, for example, um, this looks very much like the textbook we're using as far as the chapters. The chapters are lined up pretty much the same with the same numbers and everything. Um, so this one, the first, the first uh, volume, is the one for this class, but you would have, and if you wanted to buy that, you could, you go to um, order a print copy right here, and you can order it as a personal copy as an individual, and they'll take you to Amazon, and you're paying $46 for that one volume for a hardcover, 32 for a paperback if you buy used, and you can also buy it on eBay and other places that sell books like textbooks.com or whatever, they'll all have it and it'll all be about the same price, not very expensive. But then you have to go back to buy the second volume for the next, the next uh, semester. So um, the second volume I think covers the second semester. Let's just check and make sure. Volume two, table of contents. No, it doesn't look like it does actually. The second volume is thermal. Oh, it does, yeah. Here it's, it comes down to electricity. So it starts in chapter five with electricity and magnetism. So it actually, so the, the volume two does cover the second semester, but it doesn't cover, I don't know if it covers the uh, modern physics part, it doesn't. So it takes you all the way up to electricity and magnetism and light but it doesn't look like it covers optics. 
Yeah, it doesn't cover optics, which we cover in the next semester. So in the next semester, if you wanted a print book, you'd actually probably have to buy two books to cover all those if you wanted a print book. Now, the other options that you have are many. You can print off the book if you want to. If you really need a print version, you can print it and punch it and, uh, and put it in a binder or have it bound by some you know somebody for yourself. And you can do that. You can print it off a page at a time, just the pages you think are important, you know, a page with formulas on it or whatever. And why would you want to do all this? Well, because my exams are open book. So it's a very good idea to have the book in some version available to be used um, to take notes in so that you can have your notes in your book. Notes are allowed if they're in your book. If they're not in your book, they're not allowed on the exam. You can also take notes directly online in the book. So as you're looking through the book here, um, you can, well, let's see, this one used to have that option. I'm looking now, I'm not seeing it. If you sign in, if you, if you open an account with openstocks.org and then sign in and take notes electronically, you can do that. Um, if you open the one that's in WebAssign, it doesn't have the option to actually take notes. So you can't actually do it on this one but you could do it on the OpenStax version. So if we went back here to OpenStax and got uh, the physics here, no, that's still the same one. So this is OpenStax.org. And if you open up the physics book here, volume one for this class, uh, then you actually do have the options. So let's let's actually view this online or go to the view online option. You can actually take notes in this book if you press this button up here. This is the highlighting button. Then you have to log in, and once you log in, then you can actually make notes. I think I actually do have an account logged in, maybe possibly no. But uh, you can do that, and then you can take notes in it, and and you can uh, you can highlight things, and then. Uh, if you want to print that off, you can, or you can access it directly during your exam, just in a different tab or whatever. Uh, you can use this book during your exam. And any notes that are in it. Any questions so far on all the stuff we're covering here? No questions? Okay. Uh, the labs. Uh, like I said, will be done at home. They, they'll be graded. Essentially, about half the points on them will be graded just for doing the lab. And then the rest of the points, about 10 points total for the rest of the points, will be split between, do I think that you did enough to learn something? So a completion, essentially, of the lab. Not necessarily that you completed every, absolutely every activity to be done in the lab, but did you complete enough of it to learn? I realize that you know sometimes it takes longer to do labs than others, and maybe sometimes you'll get sidetracked and do something more interesting than the lab using the lab equipment. And I'm totally fine with that. Um, but I, I want to know that you've done. You know, I'm I'm looking for evidence that you've done one and a half to two and a half hours of good exploration using the lab tools and the lab directions you've been given to understand more about whatever it is we're exploring that week. So. Um, and then the last five points will be the quality of your writing and the analysis of your results. Uh, you'll be taking measurements, you know, charts of data, maybe making graphs of something. And if I can see that those are made with good quality and that you learn something by doing them, then, you know, those five points are yours. Most of my students get between 18 and 20 points on their, on their labs. So pretty much above 90% for most of my students. Uh, very rarely have I had to take off more points than that. And usually it's because students have just not put in the effort. They've not put in the time. Uh, they've not really made much effort in explaining what they've learned. They've come across a problem with the lab that you know, they just quit and give up instead of contacting me and figuring out what they can do to, to, uh, to continue or whatever. So just make sure that you're putting in the effort. It's true, and it's true in the labs. It's true in everything in this class. Putting in the effort is a huge part of it. You can see here from the grades, uh, the, the grading scale that the quizzes are worth 10%, which means that, you know, if we're, if we're giving quizzes regular because, regularly because students are missing class, they really start to matter in your grade. 10% can be the difference between an A and a B or whatever, right? 
uh, but homework is a biggie, right? You have homework in the exams, the homework, and right now the midterm and the final are 20 and 15%, but I will probably switch that so that the final is worth 20 and the midterm is worth 15, because we're only doing one midterm. That um, you have the homework and papers are worth 30% and the exams are worth about 35%. So the exams are only worth a little bit more than the homework. Um, which means that if you do really well on your homework, you can do well in the class. And so it's a really good idea to spend, to spend all the time you need to on the homework, ask all the questions you need to, make sure you maybe get a study group together or get help if you need a tutor. We, we don't actually have a tutor for this class now that I'm thinking about it. Um, we have a tutor for the other class, but not this one. But getting help from me when you need it, I, I can be your tutors. There's only you know, four or five students in the class, it's not a problem. Um, getting help from me whenever you need it instead of putting that off or you know, um, just blowing it off and I don't need help and then wasting all your time doing your heading against the wall. Make sure that you're doing what you need to do to get good grades on your homework because that will matter a lot. I've had students that will do really well on the homework and maybe struggle with all the exams and still get a great grade. That's totally possible with this grading scale. And that's the purpose of it. We don't want to have you stress over an exam that's worth 50% of your grade or something. Like that. That's just undue stress. There's also professionalism points, uh, five points of professionalism, which are put in there because I've had to deal with students being in, unprofessional from time to time. And so I put it in there. Most students just get those points for free just by being decent people. Um, but we do, we do want to make sure we're behaving professionally. I'm, I'm okay I'm okay with having a good time and joking around, but you know, we don't ever want to take that into a realm that's unprofessional and, uh, or uh, not respecting, disrespectful in any way. The labs, again, are also worth 20% of your grade. That's a large part of your grade, again. So make sure that you're putting in the effort, getting those things done and uh, learning things all that you can. I, I can't stress this enough. I am going to give you lab equipment and lab instructions. And, uh, but I really, I really do like it when students are doing a lab and they think, oh, it would be really cool to do something like this. That's kind of related. I'm going to smile on that kind of stuff. And that will, that will be good for you if you're exploring on your own and learning on your own and reporting what you learned and reporting what you did. Um, you know, it's, it's always a good idea to kind of start off doing what the lab's doing, because that helps you to understand the, the concepts, helps you to understand the, the equipment you're using. But once you get into it, if you've got ideas, if you've got thoughts about things, you want to explore something, please do. That is the essence, the very essence of science, is having uh, curiosity and, and, and exploring that curiosity about the universe around us. Any questions about what's required in the course and the the grading of the course. Uh, yeah. Okay, so the last page is all the stuff the lawyers tell us to do. Um, if you have any problems with this course or any other course uh, in the math and science department and you don't want to talk to your instructor, you can always go talk to Chad Swanson, who is our division chair. He's got his phone number here, you got his email here. Honestly, the best way to get a hold of him is by email. He answers his emails uh, very well. Um, He's busy and out and about a lot, so it's hard to catch him in his office, but um, he, is, uh, he is more than happy to listen uh, to anything that you have to say. Um, I am also more than happy to listen to anything you have to say. I'm very open-minded and, uh, and I can help you out as well. But if you don't want to talk to me, that's up to you. Um, we also have the Students with Disabilities Act. If there are any accommodations that you uh, would like to have in this course that has to go through the disabilities uh, person on campus here. With, his name is Chris Turner. He's down by the library, a little office just before you get to the library. It's often dark in there, but he's, he's usually there even if it's dark because he has vision issues. And so he, uh, he likes to be in a very dark room. Uh, he, um, he also usually keeps a little, there's a little red and white walking cane outside the door if he's there. But uh, you can also email and, and call the information is there. So uh, any questions involving all this stuff in the lawyers made us do it section? Yeah, okay. So we're done for today. Uh, make sure that you can go ahead and get started on, on uh, WebAssign if you'd like. 
there, are, there should be some, several questions in this first chapter uh, homework that are pretty straightforward. It's mostly a review section of some math and some uh, other things. There may be some things that we'll talk about on Wednesday if you have any questions, but we'll definitely go through the chapter on Wednesday and Friday as well to just make sure that you uh, know all that stuff before we really get started in this class in chapter two. So uh, we're done for today. We will see you Wednesday, same time, same place, same connection on Zoom. And uh, we'll see you later. Now, Maverick, one other question for you. Um, you're still in high school, is that correct? Yep. You're not in high school. Okay. What other class? No, no, I am, and I am in high school. Okay, so you are in high school. Okay. Uh, are you taking any other classes this semester through the college? I am. What are you taking? Do you mind me asking? Um, I'm taking a chemistry class, and I'm taking an intro to infotech class this semester. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So, yeah, uh, make sure that if you are having any troubles with due dates from other classes or anything else that you contact me as well, because I know that you also will have things at the high school to do. And, uh, and let's keep you keep in contact. Sound good? Sound good. All right, we'll see you later. Ready.